Lagos doctor, Femi Olale, is sentenced to life imprisonment for statutory rape, or what you would ordinarily call pedophilia. I am Bola Oba, and this is Plus Politics. The Managing Director of the Optimal Cancer Care Foundation, Femi Olale, was sentenced to life imprisonment on Tuesday for raping his wife's niece. Better still, for raping his underaged wife's niece. Dr. Olufemi Olale sexually assaulted the girl for more than a year until his wife found out and informed the police. The prosecutor said, the doctor had pleaded not guilty during the trial, but the judge in the Lagos court said he found the evidence against the doctor compelling and rejected his plea. Joining us live is Debbie Ario OBE. She is the chief executive officer. She is the chief executive officer of Afruca, A F R U C A a UK charity involved in child safeguarding and child trafficking issues in African diaspora uh, communities and provide services to help support children and families and rehabilitate victims. Debbie, it's a pleasure having you. Thank you, sir. Uh, you're, I know you are on the road, literally, but not quite uh, physically on the road. I know you are outside your uh, normal area, so the lighting is a bit uh, unfortunate for many of our viewers, but we'll manage it because we need the content from your head, not so much uh, the beauty of your face. I also, I, I'm also obligated at this juncture to, uh, in accordance with journalistic ethics, state that Femi Olale, medical doctor, is my friend. Uh, we got to be very close when we were in England together. And uh, about 15, 16 years ago, when we moved back to Nigeria, we drifted apart a site meeting on some few occasions. So uh, that cleared, I need to do a duty that must be done professionally. Uh, uh, Debbie, you function in our diaspora. What is your general understanding of the level of this kind of abuse within our community, especially where you function in the UK? Thank you so much. I hope you can hear me first of all. I know the, I know the lighting is not very good. We I can hear you well enough. You, can you hear quite, me? You are quite audible. Excellent. Very good. So. Well, I mean, child sexual abuse is very, very common in our community, both here in Africa, in Nigeria, and also in the diaspora. The issue is that it's very, very hidden. So now we've been fortunate enough, uh, I would say, to have somebody who saw a child being sexually abused, and she actually did something about it. I will say to you from our own experience at Africa, our charity, that a lot of child sexual abuse go unreported, i.e. people tend to hide it. They don't want to bring shame on their family. Uh, they, don't want to, uh, to, they don't want this to affect their marriage. They don't want their husband to leave them. They don't want their husband to go to prison. And so for many reasons, a lot of child sexual abuse is not reported, and many children, as a result of that, they suffer in silence, they don't get justice, they're traumatized, and, you know, there's nothing that they can do about it. So this, I mean, I know Femi as well, I knew him when he was in the UK. It is a very unfortunate case, but to be honest with you, I'm really pleased that justice has been served in this instance. Uh, there be no sane human being would, uh, would rubbish the fact that justice ought to prevail and justice has 
seemingly found its right. Um, so, uh, in no way, shape, or form, no sensible human being will rubbish the fact that uh, he got what he deserves. But having said that, we need to look beyond this convict and do an introspection of a society that from your introduction seems to be uh, to, to, to function in delusion. We pretend as though it's not there, if I understood you well. Uh, Debbie, what are the telltale signs that... There are many signs that, that if a child is being abused, Go ahead, so you see, a bubbly, you see a bubbly child, you see a child that's uh, childlike, and uh, and then at some point the child changes. They become uh, quiet. They become sullen. They they not they, you know something has happened to them. They're not talking about what's happened to them, uh, uh, or or they see somebody in particular, and anytime they see that person, you see them. Uh, they, they they you know they kind of like withdraw they're withdrawn, or they tell you or you ask them to go to somebody and they tell you they don't want to go to that person. They, they don't want to see that person. They don't want to be, they don't want to be anywhere near that person. As a parent, you have to be very, very vigilant. And sometimes children do tell us, they tell us, they don't say it uh, openly, but they give us signs. You know, there's a, you know, I don't like that uncle. I don't, I don't like going near that uncle. I don't like being sent to that uncle. I don't like that uncle calling me uh, my wife, right? They tell us all these signs, but we as parents sometimes we're not picking up on these signs. In this particular instance, it was uh, the niece. In a particular person that a child might feel they don't want to belong to. Even as far as we need to take precautions where our children are concerned. A lot of the time, we're very, very negligent in relation to how we look after our children. For example, I was reading on Facebook this morning about a family where the husband works and the wife works. They live on very, very early. They have a six-year-old daughter. So they, they recruited a, 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 a um, what do you call it, a, 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 a Okada man to take the girl to school and bring the girl to school, right? They, this is somebody that they just, you know, they, they, it wasn't a family member. And, and the man would take the girl to school, but on the way to school, he would take her somewhere else. He would rape her. And he had been doing that for months. For months until this, the school teacher noticed that there's something wrong with this girl because anytime she comes to school she's always crying so she asked the mother to come to school and the mother came to school and the child actually now said to the school teacher that the okada man has been raping her he's been having a sexual contact with her every single morning when he's taking her to school but there will have been signs there will have been signs. The parents were not able to pick up on the signs. You have to know as a parent when there's a change in your child. You, it, it's that, not, that and is, it's not just a girl child. It can also be the boy child. So sometimes we think boys are not abused. Boys too can be sexually abused and indeed are sexually abused. So parents yeah. have to be vigilant in terms of their boys and their girls to make sure that they can protect them from any, any form of uh, you know, inappropriate behavior on the part of uh, people with unscrupulous characters. Uh, you know, they shouldn't be anywhere near your child. So you have to be very careful who you allow to be near your child as uh, a parent. Debbie, uh, uh, we need to look uh, closer into the peculiar nature of our family's case. And re I really want to periscope into it because we have a situation where a long-practiced cultural, uh, cultural, how does one put it now, where you have the less fortunate members of the family of the larger family sending their wards or children to those who are seemingly more fortunate, not only for for care, as in material care. But indeed, for mentorship into uh, a kind of upward mobility. And in that peculiar instance, you have 
the icon, the, the person who ought to be the leading light of the family, being the predator on this young youngster. Uh, you want to speak to that? Yes, indeed, indeed. I mean, it's very, very unfortunate that there are so many so-called uh, important people in our society who are actually predators, right? They're predators, they're perverts, or they're pedophiles. And a lot of the time, of course, these facts are not known to the wider public. So when children or vulnerable adults come near these people, they are you know, they end up being abused or harmed in different ways. And as, as strong, I mean, one of the benefits of feminist case, if, if I can say that, is that for the first time, somebody like him, very prominent in society, a medical doctor with his own medical practice, has been jailed for life for such an offense. I think it was strong, it will send a very, very strong message that these practices are no longer tolerated by uh, by the law they will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law because there's nothing wrong in what his wife has done there's no reason why his wife cannot say okay i want my lips to come and live with me and there's no reason why that child could not have lived happily in, indeed, in the household in, indeed there was no reason for femi to have done what he has done in, but, indeed, he, but, but i mean in, but, indeed, then, uh, then, uh, but then Daddy, we can also say that historically uh, is part of our cultural architecture. We have always known. In the, when I was young, uh, you know, with a single parent, indigent single parent, somewhere in the slum of Mushi, and she had about three of us. Uh, on one or two occasions, she sent me to go live with uh, relatively better off members of the family who were junior to her. And, you know, it was also a, a, an opportunity for one, uh, for one's life to be broadened and bettered. So I see no reason why that cultural practice, a, a, a kind of social welfare architecture, cannot continue because of perverted uh, characters. Like it, uh, There's no reason why not. So, so we need to continue to raise awareness. Men, men and men in particular need to start to talk to themselves. The mere fact that you see a female doesn't mean that you must have sex with that female. Be they another female or a child. You, you know the most disturbing. You know the most disturbing part of it, of this for me. This is a very successful. Or, or up until he was convicted, this was a very successful person who ordinarily mature ladies would be running after in the Lagos environment. So I'm thinking, is this a mental health issue? Because why a child, 15-year-old then? Pedo, pedo, no, pedo, pedo, pedophilia is not a mental health issue. Pedo, pedophilia is a criminal behavior. Pedophilia is, is uh, a man who is attracted to children and feels that he needs to have sex with children. It doesn't matter if all the women in Lagos are running after him. It's, it's, just, it's just perversion, right? It's perversion and, and uh, he's taking advantage of a very vulnerable child in his care. And it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's uh, forced himself upon her and he's committed this criminal behavior, which fortunately, he was caught and he's now going to spend the rest of his life in prison. There are many, many men like him. There are many successful men in our society here, even in the UK. Uh, there, there have been a number of uh, MPs who have been jailed for similar things that he has done. So, you know, men, I don't know, men, men need to start to talk to themselves. We in relation sure, we to sure do how it. you comport yourself. How you comport yourself. You must not have sex with every female that you come across. It's, you have to have some sense of discipline and, and control. There's the member that this child is living in your house or doesn't give you the right to have sex with that child, i.e. rape that child. Because sex with a child, you know, the law assumes that there can never be informed consent. A child, a child cannot give informed consent. That's Even it. if the child says to you, yes, 
a child by law cannot give informed consent. So it means that you have raped that child, which means you have committed an illegal act in having sex with that child. So men need to talk to themselves in relation to how they comport themselves around women, both young and old. You do not have to have sex with every female that you see. You must have some some of self control, uh, and uh, you know, and 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 and, and, and not and not uh, ruin people's lives by thinking you must force yourself on them. It's not proper. You cannot do it, and the law needs to be much more stricter in terms of how this is addressed. Because like, I'm trying to think of all the other cases that in Nigeria where children have been uh, harmed in this way, and these cases never go to court. I've heard of many cases, for example where the man just gives the family money and the family keeps quiet or, or where the family the man says okay I'm, I'm going to marry her and he marries her but her life is finished her life is ruined so in this particular instance the woman quite rightly recognized what her husband did was totally wrong and she fought for justice for her niece and and thankfully justice has been served in this case I wish you could have many, I, I, I many really, more cases. I really don't this want nature. to go. I really want, don't want to go into the nitty gritty of uh, what we, the reports we read about what it took, how long it took the woman to report the case, and the fact that uh, and the fact that as Femi's uh, defense attorneys claimed in court that she ultimately decided to go report because she wanted to use it. To, to get his properties. That's not, that's not of interest to me. What is of interest to me I, at I, this I, point, <laughs> what, what is of interest to me at this point is that what should have been done, what ought to, to be done was done. He had his day in court. He defended himself with some of the best lawyers in the land and he was found guilty. And that takes me to celebrating uh, the the uh, prosecutorial architecture of Lagos State. Because like you rightly said yes. earlier on, there are so many parts of Nigeria where this could have been swept swept under, under the carpet. Uh, the child rights law of Lagos State was, was not only uh, a test, but became a living statute. And somebody today is in jail. Uh, I want you to please use this opportunity to further let our uh, men folk know. Not even the women who abuse uh, uh, abuse underaged uh, children. That the law is very, very, very strict about this. Excellent, thank you. And also, so other states in Nigeria should learn from what Lagos State has done in relation to prosecuting this case to its logical conclusion, right? So the next time we see cases like this, the police must know that a man, uh, any, any child under the age of 18 in Nigeria, any, anybody under the age of 18 in Nigeria is a child. And, you know, there's some, there's some ways we describe children in Nigeria who are being sexually abused. We don't see what they're going through as abuse. We see them as being sexually active. You know, you know, you have some comments in Yoruba, or that this child has gone around the block. It means that almost everybody on the streets has had sex with that child. That means that that child has been abused by many, many people, right? This child, in that sense, is a vulnerable child. It doesn't matter if they're 16, if they're 17, as soon as they're under 18, they're a child according to Nigerian law, which means that that person must be protected and whoever has forced themselves like i keep saying anybody under the age of 18 cannot give informed consent right even if you if oh she likes sex oh she enjoys it a child under the age of 18 cannot give informed consent which means that what you're doing is illegal we need to be running campaigns all over nigeria to make people know if you are having sex you know, you know, there was a, a youth copper sent to a girl's school, having sex with the girls in the school. You're committing a crime. A teacher having sex with the students in the school, you're committing a crime. Uh, you know, the, the pastor having sex with the children in the church or the imam, 
if you're committing a crime, we need to be running a lot of awareness campaign because it seems to me that a lot of people do not really understand what constitutes child abuse, uh, child sexual abuse in this sense, that having sex with anybody under the age of 18 in Nigeria is sexual abuse and it's an illegal act and it can land you in prison. Not as only, seen not in the only case in of Nigeria, this actually. It's not only in Nigeria. In most respectable jurisdictions on the face of the earth, if you have sex with somebody below the age of 18, or uh, below the age of 18, 18 is about the average now in most respectable... Yeah, I mean, so in, in, so in some countries, the age of consent is very different. Some countries is, is 16, it's, in some countries yeah. it's 15. But in Nigeria, uh, the, the Child Price Act of Nigeria, it is 18 years old. And, and I mean, some states have not domesticated that element of the law. We know that, especially in the north, because of child marriage. But down south, most states in the south have domesticated the Child Rights Act. And uh, the age of consent is, is 18 years old. And, and anybody who is having sex with anybody below the age of 18 years can find themselves in prison. It's important that people recognize that fact. So we need to be making a lot of noise. Aradis, because a lot of people do not seem to recognize that what they are doing is illegal. I think this uh, this famous case will be uh, will sound a note of warning to a lot a lot of people out there who think uh, maybe because they've got the social networking uh, assets or because they've got a loaded pocket or because their socialites uh, family was was quite a socialite of note uh, in so many circles. But uh, unfortunately, he's gotten himself into this school de sac. One can only wish him well. Uh, but we need to also uh, wrap up this segment by letting somebody like you who has built uh, your expertise over, I want to say, decades now. I think I've known you. Uh, yeah, you, uh, over two decades. Uh -huh, I've known you... Uh, I've known you with safeguarding issues in our diaspora for well over 20 years now. And Her Majesty, Her Majesty the Queen, God bless her soul, uh, even awarded you OBE. So you must be doing it, you, you must be doing it right. And you know, whilst doing the profile on your name, I saw that the number of cities, Manchester City and Co. have added you on some of their boards to, to help. Hey. Uh, Debbie, we want to use this opportunity and from somebody like you to talk to our men folk especially and let them know that uh, as exuberant as our culture may allow a successful male character to function, there are some limits that one should actually put on it for him himself. Definitely. Definitely. I think, no, we should be doing a lot more work around this. A lot of men, be, I mean, yes, of course, you're successful in society. And yes, of course, women want you. But forcing yourself on a woman is it it's, it's, it's rape, right? If you were in the UK, you could end up in prison. Uh, having sex with anybody under the age of 18 in, the, in Nigeria is statutory rape. If you were in the UK, you could end up in prison. So the laws of Nigeria are quite lax, and that's why, and that's why this this particular case is so important. People are getting away with things that they would, ne would necessarily or should necessarily land, land, land them in prison. Okay, Debbie. So Debbie, people need oh, to recognize. Yeah. Debbie, please hold on a while. Uh, we oh, please don't go. We, we are still you, you, you're still with us. But we have yes. another gentleman who is a medical doctor, former president of the NMA or a branch of the NMA, uh, Dr. Femi, uh, 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 his name, okay, um, former president of the Nigerian Medical Association. This is uh, Dr. Francis Ade Dayofadu Yile. He is now a special advisor to the governor or currently the special advisor to the governor of Ondo State on health matters. Dr. Fadu Ile, you are welcome to Plus Politics. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. 
Dr. Fadu, um, apart from the issue of statutory rape and uh, pedophilia, there are video clips uh, going about of uh, this same uh, person defining a patient in one of his medical facilities. How does the medical of how does the medical authorities take that? Well, we have uh, people who may have some difficulties about their personality and may also end up to be a medical practitioner. And if they have such illnesses or diseases they will really need a medical or clinical attention so that they can be taken care of. Secondly, the medical profession has also put in place procedure of dealing with people who show infamous conduct or who does things against the Hippocratic Code. And that is the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria. And in this case, I must tell you that if truly the person has gone ahead to seek for medical uh, cure or therapy, it may have been stopped in that unruly behavior. Unfortunately, he continued until he was picked, and our law court has done the appropriate thing by giving justice against such infamous behavior. Dr. Fadu Hile, um, the medical authorities, uh, and I mean authorities such as the Nigerian Medical Association and other related uh, bodies, must have uh, mechanisms to, at least after prima facie conviction in instances like this, protect his image from such deviants. Uh, what are the regulations or what are the measures that uh, the NMA has to protect the image of other majority innocent doctors whose uh, reputation may be, for perception's sake, uh, brought to some degree of uh, we can with conducts like this? Well, I must say that the medical profession has put in measures to guide against such behavior. One of the measures is that every man who is to attend to a female must have a chaperon. And that chaperon should naturally be a female who stays with him in the consulting room. It is a misconduct if a man or a gender examines the opposite gender without having a chaperon with him or her. Secondly, if we have people who have done such wrong, it is necessary that those who have been uh, assaulted should report. If they report first to the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria, they will try him, and if he's found guilty of misconduct or gross misconduct, punishment of suspension or striking of his name from medical 
register can be measured on him. And if we have a criminal nature in that act, is also referred to the court for adjudication of the criminal offense. In this particular case, once he has been found guilty in a criminal uh, offense like this, the Medical and Dental Council will use that judgment to take care of such person from also screen other patients and to protect the medical profession and the professionals who are seeing our patients. Dr. Francis Adedayo Faduile, a former president of the Nigerian Medical Association, NMA, and currently special advisor to the governor of Ondo State on health matters, we really, really want to thank you. We know you are literally on the road. You are, you know, for giving us this time and enlightening our public. Thank you very much, Doc. Uh, we, uh, Debbie, is Debbie still there? Yes. Debbie. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm uh, still here. Saddening story, whichever direction one looks at it, but one story that needs to be put out there for importantly and particularly for the deterrence of those who may have such criminal tendencies. What do you say to that? Well, I mean, you know that in the UK, before, uh, before somebody is uh, appointed into specific jobs, they have to carry out what we call a, a you know a disclosure and bearing check, DBS, and this is a safeguarding measures. If somebody has been, uh, if they are committed any form of crime, and as an employer, if I do a DBS check on them, the crime that they've committed will be noted on their records. Even if they've been given a caution, it will be on their record. Not if they've been arrested, not necessarily, but if they've gone through any, any formal legal process, it will be on their record. And so as an employer, say for example, as a, the owner of a hospital, I can check to make sure that the doctors I am recruiting, the nurses I am recruiting, have not committed crimes in the past that will put my patients in jeopardy. And I think that the Nigerian Medical Association should have something very similar uh, to like to that. In fact, employers say, across Nigeria should start having a system in place where you can check somebody's uh, identity, check the uh, you know the, the criminal records, if any, before they're given a job, especially uh, in a sensitive position I, I like being say, a medical doctor. Debbie, I must say that amongst the penalties awarded against. Femi, apart from the life imprisonment, uh, in accordance with the Child Rights Act, uh, with the Child Rights Law of Lagos State, amongst the penalties was that the uh, the judge pronounced that his name be put on Lagos sexual offenders list, and I would want to Excellent. believe that if such a list exists, it then it's then incumbent on any employer of labor, especially employer of labor in the area of medical services, employer of labor in the area of uh, children's education, mm -hmm. to be consulting such list amongst the paraphernalia to be checked before employing somebody to work with vulnerable, vulnerable people in our mm -hmm. society. Uh, or what do you say the, to that? The, 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 the states should even make it mandatory. The states should, should make, make it, it mandatory, mandatory for any employer. For example, you know, uh, teachers, kindergarten, uh, kindergarten uh, teachers, secondary school, primary school teachers, uh, you know, uh, hospital staff, and uh, even police officers, before you recruit them, just like we do in the UK, you must undertake a DBS check. If you don't, if you don't and something happens, as an employer, you will be liable financially and, and otherwise. And so I think we need to start to 
uh, refine the I, process I like, of employing employing people in such positions. I, I like the I, I like the angle you're going now. You, you're speaking to vicarious liability of the employer who may have employed uh, a yeah. deviant or a pervert without checking on yes, checking I'm, up on his or her record, and ultimately when that yes. person abuses a, a, a victim or victims, as in the case of Femi now, uh, that indeed the employer could be sued for the vicarious liability. Is that not what I've understood you to have stated? That, that absolutely, that is absolutely. For example, even though Femi is the proprietor of his hospital, he must have a board of trustees, which means that, that even he himself should have been subjected to such a, a check, right? Such a like a DBS check every year. So, for example, in my charity Africa, every single employee must do a DBS check every single year. Because if you do one this year, in the interim period, something could have happened. So, every single year, we do DBS checks. And if it, it should it come out that uh, an, employee, uh, uh, an employee of the charity has done, then we, we will sack them. It's a sackable offense, right? So, I think we need to start to make to make it mandatory for certain professions to ensure that they check the criminal records of the people that they're employing to make sure that they have not committed crimes that can put people, vulnerable people, children at risk. It is important that we start to put that in place. I, I think you have just uh, you may not know, but you have just nodded me in the direction of doing a follow up. Uh, on this topic, especially speaking to somebody from the Lagos State Ministry of Justice and uh, yes. and legal uh, legal luminaries uh, who may have functional uh, knowledge of uh, of um, safeguarding uh, safeguarding laws, not only in Lagos, indeed across Nigeria. Debbie, I really want Absolutely. to. Oh, yeah. Go, go I think we should start to talk about it. Yeah. I, no, well, uh, 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 I think we need to start talking a lot about it. It is it is high time that Nigeria has put in place a very effective system of safeguarding children and vulnerable adults. Anybody in a hospital is a vulnerable adult. If they're not a child, then they're a vulnerable adult. They are in the care of the hospital. There is no reason why the doctor in the hospital should be uh, sexually abusing them, sexually harassing them, raping them. It is, it, it is such a terrible thing to do. But I, I, I think if there's no system in place, I, I, I if think there are no system in place to check it. Debbie. Sorry, you go on. I, I, I think you have just touched on a phraseology now that needs uh, a, a, a little bit more of accentuation of uh, or elaboration vulnerable adults uh, a yes. lot of us especially men in our society because of the power advantage that we have in some environments say as lecturers even when the victims are above the age of consent uh, or at places of employment because we are the superior officers um, we may not know that some uh, some seemingly or ostensibly consensual uh, this thing may indeed lead one in the direction of the uh, of the gaol. Uh, am I right? Absolutely, you are abso you are absolutely right. If you are a lecturer in a university and you have all these young girls in your you know taking your course, they're 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds. Okay, they may no longer be minors. Right, they might no longer be under 18, but they're still they're still vulnerable because of the power imbalance that lies between you and them. So you know that, and that's why universities too should do DPS checks. The, the universities. So if a lecturer has committed some offence in a university, they should not be able to transfer to another university without that university seeing it on their criminal record or whatever record that they, they were sacked from this university, right, for this offense. So that the new university should know that, and for that reason should not be recruiting them in a, in a, and put them in a situation where they can abuse other, uh, other students. 
So, I mean, the ramifications of what has happened today is very, very broad for the whole of Nigeria in terms of safeguarding, safeguarding children, safeguarding adults. It's very broad. It's about time that Nigeria has in place a system, an effective system, where people can not just act with impunity in relation to abusing people because you want to have sex with this woman, you just force yourself on them, and there's no repercussion. That should be ending now, especially in relation to Femi's case. Definitely. Ah, we Debbie, should be putting an end to it. Debbie, I really have to thank you. Uh, you have been more than an asset to, to this episode. I really pray and hope that the Nigerian public, especially our men folk, and including myself, will use this, uh, this opportunity and the very many uh, words of wisdom that you have given as an opportunity for sober reflection. Uh, uh, and we hope Nigeria will get better when uh, justice prevails as it does seem to have prevailed in this instance. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, sir. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks uh, very much. Thank you.